Hi, welcome back. I'm Bailey. I'm the Copycat Stitch on YouTube and on Instagram, and today I'm talking travel knitting. Personally, I love travel knitting. I think it's an extremely productive time for me to knit. I look for certain things in a project that I plan on taking on the road, which is what I'm going to talk about today. The different ways that I choose my materials and my patterns and the entire project that I plan on knitting while I'm on the road. I've got a vacation coming up. I'm going on a two week road trip with my husband around the Southeast Midwest, and I'm planning on taking three knitting projects with me. So today I'm gonna to talk about how I choose patterns and materials for taking on the road and why I think travel knitting is some of the most productive knitting that I know. I'm able to knit in a vehicle if I take Dramamine first. So I'm in the habit of taking that every time I'm going to be in the car for more than an hour or so because I like to get some knitting done in the car. Um, on this road trip, I'm going to have a ton of time to knit in the car. I think we've got five or six different days where we're going to be driving at least three hours, sometimes as much as eight hours. So I'm bringing three whips with me. My most recent travel whip is actually this sweater. I love this sweater so much. Uh, I only just finished it not too long ago and I've been wearing it all the time, but I did initially cast it on to take with me when I was going to be at, uh, away for work for a whole week. So I think this sweater is a really good example of the things that I look for in a travel knitting project. First of all, I think it's got to be knitting. Personally, I get really car sick, motion sick. Um, I absolutely cannot look at what I'm doing while I'm doing it and I can't crochet without looking. So that means I need a knitting project and I need a simple knitting pattern. For instance, this one is a huge long sweater duster that is entirely one by one ribbing and stocking it. And it is very large swaths of stocking it, which is why I chose it. Another important aspect of it is choosing lightweight materials that are easy to travel with. So I chose this yarn, which was in my stash. I had a huge quantity of Lion Brand Low Tide this is the colorway Dunes. I chose this one. It's a chain net yarn, so it's hollow and it's really, really lightweight. Like even though this is a monstrously large sweater, it's not particularly heavy and it's great for warm weather like we're having right now. But it was also great to have a, a bag full of the full sweater quantity of this yarn with me on my road trip, but it was not heavy at all. This is all the yarn that I am going to take on my road trip. Not too heavy. As far as tools when I'm taking on the road, even though I have a lot of great knitting tools that I genuinely love, like my nice wooden interchangeable needles and all of my favorite stitch markers and stuff, those aren't the ones I take with me. I'm cautious to only take the ones with me that I genuinely wouldn't be broken if I lost it. So even though you know, having special tools and notions adds so much to a knitting project, for me it's not worth it to take it on the road and risk losing that special item just to have it with me for this one whip. So I take extras I have, definitely not my fancy interchangeable needles, not my favorite polymer stitch markers. I'm just going to take still pretty but less beloved tools with me. So when I'm choosing a pattern, I'm choosing one with a very simple repeat. It doesn't have to be a sea of stocking net like this one was, but it helps if it's a very simple stitch repeat over a large piece of fabric that you don't have to refer to the pattern very often. Like I said, I get car sick and having to look at my phone or at a piece of paper to double check the pattern a lot is much more likely to make me unwell than knitting is. So I like to have one that I can basically memorize and not have to check the pattern too often for reference. Last year when I was flying down to Florida for vacation, I chose to make the leaf sweater by the Knit Stitch. And I never actually finished it. It's still in my UFO pile, which is something that I'm getting to this summer. But it was a great repeat to have, even though it wasn't a super simple just knit across, it was a row repeat that was easy to remember and easy to read my knitting without focusing too hard on it. And I got more than half of the sweater done on that vacation. For that reason, one of my projects that I have chosen to take on this road trip is the Primavera sweater by The Knit Stitch. 
I've been sitting on this pattern for a while and I'm really excited to use it. Um, I'm not going to be using real mohair, but I do have a lot of uh, FOMO from Lion Brand. This is the colorway Peach. And the pattern calls for yarn to be held triple. FOMO is a little thicker because it's not real mohair. Uh, the base of the yarn is a little thicker, I think, than real mohair is. So I'm only going to hold this double, but I think that one's an eight row repeat. It's pretty simple and I think it can be really nice. Um, but I don't want to get burnt out on just one project. I'm, this is a long road trip. It's 12 nights and I don't want to get tired of a project and be upset and not want to work on it anymore. And similarly, uh, I don't want to finish a project and be left without a whip. The second project I've chosen to do is from this book by Knit Picks, Equinox Cotton Collection. I have chosen this t-shirt. I don't remember what it's called. Let me... Cascades Tea. I think it's cute. Again, the bottom, or excuse me, the top has a simple lace repeat pattern that I think is not too difficult to remember and repeat in the car or in the hotel, but most of it is stuck in it. It's very simple to remember, and I'm using, I have four skeins of this Oru Yarn Cotton Basics in my stash. This is by Knit Crate, and it's DK, it's 100% cotton. Really pretty. It's a tonal. I don't know how well that's picking up on camera, but there are some very light and very dark purples here. I think it's going to be really cute. And that's a simple one to work on. The third project that I'm planning to do is the biggest one, and this one is a sea of stocking it. Um, honestly, I probably think I'm going to like working on this one the most. I chose this one purely for the simplicity of the pattern and the fact that I had a very large quantity of this yarn because I got it cheap and I wouldn't normally be able to create a garment this large if it weren't for the extremely inexpensive yarn that I found. I really, really loved working on it. I chose it purely out of economy for, you know, the travel knitting choices that I laid out earlier, but I genuinely enjoyed working on this and I only probably finished about 40% while I was actually away from home and I plowed through it and wrapped it up pretty quickly after I came home and it's one of my favorite finished objects ever. So similarly, I have chosen to do two of wands. It's called Clubhouse Raglan Hoodie. And that one, this is the kind of unusual colorway. This is a yarn that I also got a large amount of because it was on clearance. This is a brand, I believe it's exclusive to Joanne Fabrics. It is uh, Knit and Crochet element. It's 90% cotton, 10% acrylic. I believe that the cotton is the chainette casing and the acrylic is just the colors blown into it. So as far as I can tell, it's just an off-white kind of ecru color <laughs> uh, chainette casing that has uh, some pink tonal to it. And then all of these like browns and blacks are acrylic fibers that were blown into the casing. So it's kind of unusual, but I have a very big quantity of it and I think it's very soft. I think it would make a nice hoodie. And again, this is another garment that takes a lot of yarn. You want to make a hoodie quite oversized and I'm not sure that I would be able to do it in a nicer yarn. So I'm going to take the opportunity while I'm away and I can definitely do a huge quantity of stagnant stitch to use this and try to kind of replicate the joy that I found when I was making this sweater. I tend to like to cast on projects specifically to take on the road. I think it's exciting to be able to think through the most practical choices to take with me while I travel and cast them on specifically for the trip. In a way, it kind of makes the finished objects like a souvenir. Even though I brought everything with me from home, like the act of creating them while I'm on the road or in a different place brings up those memories in the end when I have or when I wear the finished object. I like to actually cast on the projects before I leave. I don't want to be 
you know, casting on stitches and counting and double checking that kind of thing in the car. I'm going to get the foundation of it on. Um, if I have to join in the round, get that done, maybe do a couple rows just to get the thing started and make it easier to pick up once I'm actually in a moving vehicle. So I'm going to get all three of these casts on before I leave for vacation next week, but I'll take you with me. I'll do some vlogging on the road so you can see where me and my projects go. I don't know where this trip will take us. I mean, I do. I absolutely know the itinerary that I've been slaving over, but I don't know what those moments will look like. I don't know exactly how much knitting I'll get done, how much of each of these projects will get completed on the trip. But I guess we'll see and we'll check back at the end so that you can see all the progress I made and where my projects end up. We're leaving for our road trip the day after tomorrow and I've got my travel whips all ready to go. I've got them set up in separate bags, I've got them all cast on and knitted to a certain point, and I've got little notions bags ready to take with me as well. So I thought I'd show you what my setup is. So here is all the knitting I'm bringing with me. I've got my notions bags over here and I've got all three of my whips. So let's dig into it. This one, I didn't have to do very far. This one is knit flat and it's just got a little bit of a detail at the bottom, a couple rows of garter stitch and a little eyelet row for details. Um, so I did that to get it out of the way. This one will be a really good one for knitting in the car. This one I've got more than a little bit out of the way. I'm really enjoying it and I kind of can't put it down. I keep picking it up even when I should be reaching for other things. So this one is also an excellent one for doing in the car. I'm almost done with the yoke now. And once I get past that, it'll be even easier to keep going in the car. But as it is, you know, I've got my stitch markers on. It's not easy to miss the increases for the raglan. I'm probably going to work on this one the most because I'm enjoying it the most right now. And this one I've got a bit done too. Um, I'll be honest, I think now that I've got it started, it wasn't 100% the best choice for travel knitting. Um, it's pretty. I definitely, something that I want to make, something that I'll enjoy having. This, this yarn is lightweight. Absolutely checks that box. Um, it is very warm. It's, you know, it's an acrylic mohair, faux mohair. It's literally called FOMO. Um, it's heavy and I don't know if it'll be the best one for summer knitting. It's certainly not the best one for car knitting. Uh, this chart is a little more intense than I expected. I guess I should have read the pattern more closely before I chose it. I chose it because the Knit Stitch did a pattern that I used for travel knitting last year that was very straightforward. It's the leaf sweater. I know that she's got like 60 bazillion versions of the leaf stitch, uh, in different garments that she's made. This one is worked flat. It was really straightforward. It's like a six row repeat or an eight row repeat or something very simple like that. Um, I think this one will be simple, but I didn't realize it was worked in the round and it's got these raglan increases while it's got the repeat going. And this first stage is certainly not easy to remember and certainly not something I would venture to do in the car. I'm still going to bring this one with me. I definitely think it's got enough interest that if I get bored working on these two mainly stocking net projects, that this one will, you know, kind of recapture my, my interest and give me something to work on, especially at hotels or at Airbnbs along the way. And these two will be plenty to work on in the car. Okay, so let's talk notions. Um, like I talked about in the intro, I'm bringing not my favorite notions. Not that I don't want or use these, but um, bringing the things that I won't be devastated if I lose them. So this pouch is the one that I'm planning on bringing into baseball games with me. We're planning on going to five baseball games on this road trip, and especially MLB parks have very specific rules about what you can and can't bring into the stadium. So I'm planning on bringing these notions, which I, I won't be heartbroken over losing if they're either confiscated or lost or something like that. I'm just bringing a couple plastic darning needles. I am going to bring one or two of my regular metal darning needles, but I'm not going to bring my whole tin that I normally use because I don't want to lose the whole thing. That would be awful. I've got this little case that has some uh, plastic stitch markers in it, an extra tape measure, which is not my favorite one that I use all the time. Again, extra crochet hook just in case for repairs. And then these little snips are very handy. I absolutely don't want to lose these, but I think this is what they're kind of made for is 
situations like this where you wouldn't be able to bring normal snips or scissors in. So, and then here, this is a bag I like a little more. I'm not planning on bringing this into ballparks or anywhere where I might lose it. It's gonna stay in the car or in the hotel with our stuff because it's really cute little handmade pouch. I'm bringing a digital row counter, probably to use most in the car. Um, a little stitch holder thing for you to try on your, your nets while you're working on them, just in case. Again, not something I'm sure I'll need, but it's something that I think I'll regret not bringing if I have a need for it while I'm away. And then my Knit Picks uh, interchangeable short tip needles because I am making three garments with sleeves. So it's, it's likely that I'll need shorter needles while I'm on the road. And I don't know that the ones that I've chosen are good for Magic Loop. So I just wanna have the option while I'm out there. Okay, so we're back from our trip. We had so much fun. I'm so exhausted, even though I've had several days to relax since we got back. But I wanna talk about all the knitting that I got done and all the stuff that I learned. So probably pretty predictably, I never once picked up the Primavera sweater the entire vacation. It's in this bag. It's in the exact same state that I showed you before I left. Um, I think I got a little bit thrown I think I got a little bit thrown by the, the construction of it and knowing that I would need to kind of read the chart. It's not as easy of a pattern repeat to remember as the leaf sweater from the same maker. Now, I brought three projects in the first place because I wanted to bring way too much. I didn't want to find myself without a project on the road. And I chose these based on what I thought was a reasonable assessment of what the patterns were and what I could expect of myself on the vacation. And this one didn't meet that. And that's something else I learned from another one of the patterns is that a tip I would add for before you travel is definitely thoroughly read through the patterns to understand what you need to do before you go. Because even though I had a pretty easy time with the other one, the uh, t-shirt that I was working on, I thought I understood how the construction worked and I didn't. And I came to that part when we were in the car and I kind of gave myself a headache going back and forth between the pattern and looking at the, my work and sometimes frogging and getting it back to where I needed to be to correct it. So I think if I had read the pattern more fully in the first place and actually understood the construction, then I wouldn't have had that issue on the road and I wouldn't have been surprised and confused and had to read so much while I was in a moving vehicle. That said, I actually got really far on it. Um, the thing about the construction that I didn't understand, for some reason I thought it was knit in two panels, front and back, and then you seam them and add sleeves. You don't, it is knit in one panel, which is kind of a cool construction. Um, you use scrap yarn to hold the stitches in the middle to come back at the end and do a neckle. So you can see this contrast yarn. This is actually the yarn from my Clubhouse Raglan hoodie. Um, you can kind of see it on the back too. It's just one little blip of stitches there. At the end, once I have got this panel all done, I can take that out, add the neckline, which is a neat construction. But also, 
that means I was lugging this huge piece of fabric around to the last couple of games because this was the piece that I chose to bring with me to baseball games on the road. This was the most portable one I had um, and definitely just stocking that for most of it except for this bit in the middle with the lace, which I did end up having to start at a baseball game, but wasn't so bad. I didn't make any mistakes or anything, even with the beer. Uh, and then I finished it up in the car the next day so I could get back to stock net for the rest of the trip. Uh, it's coming along great. I really love it. It's super easy to work with. The fabric is uh, really nice and soft and it's a nice cotton t-shirt. I'll be glad to have it when it's done. But this was a little cumbersome to take into ballparks with me <laughs> in the end. And this one was pretty straightforward. I worked on it a lot. I think I actually... I ended up only working on this either at baseball games or on transit on the way to and from baseball games. So a good portion of it was like on the train in between cities, but I only worked on it on game days and I only took it with me when we were going to a game. So that's a lot of baseball. <laughs> that was five games. Worth. Actually, it's well, okay. So it's four games worth. The Baltimore Orioles don't allow you to bring any bags into the stadium at all. Um, every other game that we went to allows you to bring a small tote bag. I have a, that standard clear tote bag that I bought from our local baseball team, the Syracuse Mets, that most baseball uh, clubs sell because it's easier for their security to handle it. They recognize them. It's easier for them to see into the bag. And you always get through security a lot easier if you have one, which is why I bought it in the first place, because I do bring my knitting to our local baseball games. Um, the Orioles do not allow any tote bags, even clear ones. So even though I worked on this on the train to and from Baltimore that day, I didn't work on it in the stadium. It sat in a paid locker outside waiting for us to be done. This one kind of ended up being my baby. I I knew before I, I left because as you saw, I cast on all of my projects a couple days ahead of time. So I had a good foundation to just get going once we left. And I already kind of couldn't put this one down before we left. I kept kind of picking at it in the evenings before the last couple days before we hit the road. Uh, I, I worked on it all the time. If you follow my stories, you will have seen uh, previews of it because I kind of tried it on in Columbus and uh, I love it. So it actually ended up kind of being stripey, which I didn't anticipate. Um, these balls of yarn to me look variegated, but they are not, they are striping. Um, here, I can show you one. So this is what they look like. It's a cotton chainette casing and it's got brown, black, and pink acrylic fibers blown into it to add the color. Uh, but the colors, even though they are speckly, are overall self-striping. They're very long stripes. Actually, each ball of yarn has one long stripe of brown, one long stripe of black, and one long stripe of pink. Um, so I found myself trying to kind of choose the balls that look like they start at around where I left off on the last one, but all the stripes are not even. It doesn't matter. It's a hoodie. It's very casual. I think it's close enough. You can see some of the pink stripes are closer together than others, but it's so comfy. I'm so excited already. It's very fluffy. This one's going to take a while longer. I'm almost done with the ribbing on the end. I think I have a couple more rows. I wanted to leave it though. This is exactly where it was when I left off, oops, I'm dropping stitches here. This is exactly where it was in the car when I got home. I knit on this the whole way home. And then I stopped. Um, and I haven't picked it up since we got home a few days ago because I wanted to show you exactly how far I got on vacation. So if you remember, I definitely hadn't split for sleeves yet. I think I ended up splitting for sleeves on our first day on the road in the car. And that was another thing that I forgot that I wanted to mention. Something that I left off my list of things to pack is stitch holders. Uh, I have a bunch of the little kind of like giant safety pin shaped stitch holders. I didn't remember to bring any of them. I luckily did bring my interchangeable uh, needles that I showed you, the short tip needles, and I had several of the extra cables and I had just enough. I had four of these little caps that go on the end. So both of my sleeves are just being held on uh, interchangeable needle cables. It works perfectly. It actually, I didn't have to change anything when I put it on the little rubber tie to try it on in Columbus. My arms fit through these just fine because they're nice and open. Really enjoying this one. I can't wait to keep working on it. I'm glad that I'm getting this filming done because I've been holding off to show you 
but I really want to keep going. I got the sleeves and I got the hood and whatever's going on with the neck here. But I think I'm really going to enjoy wearing this one, so I'm excited to keep going. So, all in all, the top things I learned were definitely read your patterns ahead of time so you fully understand what you're getting yourself into before you get on the road, and it's easier for you to understand those steps when you come to them, even if you're in a car. Two, when you read through those patterns, think carefully about which tools you'll specifically need for that pattern, like stitch holders or progress keepers or stitch markers. I did remember to bring some stitch markers on the road, which was handy, but I think I would have benefited from doing my research a little more carefully and understanding exactly which tools I needed. I would have remembered to bring stitch holders. You know, it would have made my process a lot more smoother overall. Um, a third thing that I learned, I think, is I, I think attached to the idea that you need to read the patterns all the way through, but also choose patterns for their portability. So even though I loved working on this hoodie, this isn't a practical one to bring with me to the baseball games that we went to. The t-shirt was far more practical. But again, I thought it was worked in panels and I was only gonna be bringing at most half of a shirt with me to work on. Ultimately, I was bringing a very large panel that was kind of awkward to work on at a ball game because I had a very large like puddle of fabric in my lap every time I worked and it's hard to turn that amount over and over again. And I think the fourth thing that I learned that maybe I already knew but I reinforced on this trip was to just be flexible about it. I'm not mad at myself for not touching that Primavera sweater. I'm glad I had a backup but I didn't feel like working on it that whole trip and I felt like enjoying myself and letting my knits kind of enhance my vacation and not overshadow it. I'm glad that I love working on the hoodie, I loved working on the t-shirt and I had a backup if I needed it but I never needed it so it was great. So I hope some of my tips and my experiences here help you plan your future travel knitting. Tag me on Instagram if you're doing any travel knitting. I'd love to see it. And I hope you enjoyed my progress along the way, seeing my road trip. Check out episode two of my podcast if you want to see all of the things that I bought at the six local yarn stores that I stopped at along the way. And if you want to see the summary of my entire trip, you can check out the highlight of my stories that I left on the, my profile on my Instagram page. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.